All right, so I am here in Photoshop, and what I want to do here is to take the texture image, which is here, the cake texture, and extract out of it the maps for roughness. I'm just going to briefly explain how those maps are going to work. Black pixels are going to give me no roughness. White pixels, on the other hand, are going to give me absolute roughness. And the gray is going to be in between. The darker the gray, the less roughness I'm going to have. The brighter the gray, the closer is going to be the absolute. Now what I want to do is to start with the process of taking this layer and turning it into roughness map. I'm going to drag and drop the texture image on that plus. That's going to give me a new layer. So when it comes to maps, as I mentioned here, it's basically grayscale. The thing you never want to do is to go to image and then mode and then grayscale. Because once you do this, it's going to turn everything into grayscale, including the texture, and that's not good. Another approach is Control U, which is the shortcut for image adjustment and then hue and saturation. When you go to the hue and saturation, you can reduce the saturation of the texture that you want all the way down. Now it's grayscale, and you do have some sort of control over the lightness which gives you some kind of control over the intensity of the shades that you're going to end up with however my preferred method comes from controlling the color channels as you may know already the channels for every image that has colors we have rgb and the combination of these three channels give us the colored result all right, so making sure I have the right layer selected, I'm going to go into Image, Adjustment, and then Channel Mixer. Channel Mixer is going to allow me to go click Monochromatic, and turning the image into grayscale is the first step that I need. But next, I will have the ability to have a lot more control over changing those shades that I will get in a way that would be reducing the amount of editing that I would do later. I need the cocoa powder to be the brightest pixel. So if this is the result you're getting, that's totally fine. Just keep in mind that after you click OK, you can easily just hit Control i and invert those shades. All right, so I'm going to go now to the levels. Control l L as in levels. And what I want to do is to kind of increase the brightness of these pixels to be as much as possible while maintaining as much of that noise as possible as well because the brighter they are the more rough they would be and I want them to be absolutely rough okay so next I just want to make sure that I have things right toggling back into the image this is not supposed to be rough this is more like jello or jam so I would need it to be in fact more like glossy so in this case here, since they have bright pixels, that's going to work in the opposite of what I want. So for that reason, I'm going to click and hold, uh, I'm going to click B for the brush, then click and hold Alt and steal this shade here so it would be the same. So now I'm going to paint it and make sure it sort of blends with the shades around it. And of course, you can layer that process in a way that you can apply filters and add noise to it and whatnot just to kind of make it blend properly with the original image the same noise that joe has created here but i'm going in a simplified kind of uh, manner alt click and hold alt and pick as you can see here this is going to show you how much of that roughness you're going to get because the lower it's going to go the least amount of roughness you're going to get so you can use this as your measurement if if the shades were like this way, meaning like this, that's going to be absolutely rough, right? So you could use this again as your measurement. So this is kind of really close to being no rough at all. So this is a good start. Go with the lasso tool. Now I'm going to click M as in marquee tool and click shift so now i am adding to that selection so here's my marquee tool even though if i paint extra here it wouldn't really matter but just 
to keep things neat, organized, and easier to understand for me or for anyone whom I am handing this artwork to. And I can go back and fix this, but um, I'm not going to spend too much time on micromanaging it. Now, uh, this here is going to be, as you can see here, it's kind of, uh, it's going to have more roughness than this area, which is not something that I want. So, instead I want it to be kind of darker, so it would be more on the moisty side. So I will go into W to go to the magic wand, and then click. So my goal is to just pick this area, but it's picking a lot more. Control D to deselect. Now I'm going to go to the tolerance of that magic wand, and I'll make it like 10 to reduce the tolerance, and therefore it would be more sensitive for the variety of shades. Okay, so this is what I wanted. Uh, I can also, if I want to add more areas to it, I can help hold shift. So it would be adding more. It would be kind of less sensitive. Or I can go back through the process and uh, increase the amount of tolerance. But this is good. Now what I can do is control L and change the shades to something darker, which means it's going to have the least amount of roughness in this map. Control D. And now what I can do is uh, I can either blend these or I can just go and decide um, like what are the surfaces. Again, we have some noise here, so it's supposed to kind of blend with some noise. One thing you can always do is to go back to the original image, go to the W and pick these uh, shades or colors in this case. Let's say I'm going to go to 20. Control D to deselect and try again. So I could use this selection, go back to the layer of the roughness, and then decide here what really uh, I want to paint. So this way I don't have to kind of paint so carefully. You can always go back to the original drawing or texture and make a selection of it and then go back and influence your, um, your texture. But I'll just kind of play by ear here. The summary is, this is absolutely rough. This is here a lot less rough, and this area here has uh, more roughness than this area, and less roughness than this area. Okay, And the reason why I made this to have a lot less roughness is because you know, assuming that it would be some sort of like moisty kind of cake. Not to mention that the area here where the uh, jam is, uh, ideally what I want to do is to really make it a lot less rough. So let's do that right now, actually. By reducing the opacity, I know exactly where it is. So now what I want to do is to paint over this area here to make it different. But why waste my time and paint over? Because it's not going to be accurate. In fact, I might lose the details that Joe has created here. So, what I want to do is to hide the layer, go here to the texture, hit W. Now, notice this. If I want to select this using W, it's going to be a nightmare. Because these lines are not necessarily connected. So, here's a better method. This is why it's very important in Photoshop to learn how to do one thing in very different ways. You go into Select, and then you go into Color Range. Then you click on the area that you want. It's like the magic wand, but you click here. Now if I hold Shift, it's going to pick any more of those color tones that I want including this one for here, for instance. And I don't care if it exceeds, because I will erase that so easily later. And then on top of that, what you can do is increase the fuzziness, which means it's going to reduce the sensitivity of that selection. And now, if I hit OK, check this out. It's a lot easier this way. It's pretty much good. And lastly, I am going to deselect using the marquee first, M on the keyboard, and then Alt, so I can deduct selection. 
So anything I draw outside, it's going to be deducted here and here. There you go. And if you feel that, you know what, I'm not really exactly sure I have the right selection. You can always create a new layer and slap like fluorescent green light. And you know what, here is Alt Backspace. Does it look right? Yes. Then in this case, nice. Now what I want to do is to throw in a very dark shade on top of it. So I don't need this layer, this testing layer anymore. I'm going to go into the roughness map and then hit Alt Backspace. After, of course, I have decided what shade that I want. Now, when I hit Control D to deselect, you can see this result here. Here's something, here is something that is funny, you know, in, in hindsight, uh, when you think about it. But in many cases, we would be tempted to jump into the 3D scene and then like, okay, so let's see here. Oh, it's not really any different. Well, you have to save first. All right, so here I just wanted to show you what was the final result that I ended up with. I went with bright pixels for the areas that I wanted to be really rough, the areas that I wanted to have the most specular and the least roughness is the area that I darkened. And um, I may be tempted to even darken it even further just so I can have the most glossiness possible. And lastly, I want to mention that if your project requires or needs a uh, metalness map, like reflectivity, for something that is metallic, then in that case, in oftentimes, you might end up just duplicating the roughness and hit Control i because in many cases, the reflective materials are the opposite of the rough. So this would be something that it's going to save you sometime getting started on the metalness or reflective map. As you're getting ready to export those maps, consider exporting them in TIFF format for highest quality. Although JPEG and PNG would do a good job, but the format could play a part because it depends on the bit depth. However, in many cases, a compressed image would do the job okay. So that's going to be the end of this demo for the Photoshop section. Now moving on, I want to jump into Procreate and do the more fun process where I can paint on the 3D model right away. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to save the work because Maya always likes to crash at the time when you're starting to make some progress. Then I'm gonna go into the hypershade. I don't really care what's the name of the material. Oh, look at that, look at that. Just wonderful, just as expected. So. Luckily, I did save my file, and yeah, as if if I report anything, anything's gonna happen. 